Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cbrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 20 video. In this one we're going to be doing a division specific guide for Showdown for the NL Central. If you guys could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new, that would be much appreciated. And if you missed my comprehensive guide to Showdown or how to get the team affinity cards in the fastest way possible those two videos will be in the description below but this video is going to be covering the NL Central so uh, we're going to go over drafting perks is the same for every division but we'll go over it again who the mini bosses are and how to beat the final boss so for the NL Central <laughs> I'm almost done with all five affinities for this and I've only ever seen one boss let me know in the comments if I'm wrong if you've seen someone different but every single time I've done this, I have faced Josh Hader as the final boss. And because it's Josh Hader and Josh Hader is a relief pitcher, in my opinion, this is the easiest division to skip to the end right away. So if you're already having success skipping to the end uh, and beating these showdowns, I don't think you'll struggle with the NL Central at all. Um, and if you want to try skipping to the end to maybe save some time, this may be the division to do so. But don't get me wrong. Uh, very, this division is very beatable if you go the slow way through the mini bosses as well. And as I said in my comprehensive guide, <clears throat> you will get lots more stubs and a couple packs, or lots more XP, lots more stubs and a couple packs from doing it the, the slow way through the mini bosses. So, um, doing it the slow way is kind of awkward in the NL Central because the two mini bosses are right handed pitchers, but you need to be building your team to face left handed pitching. Uh, for the final boss, but we will cover all that. One quick note, if you are a person that's going to skip to the end, um, realize that you're facing Josh Hader, and this is the biggest tip I can give for you guys, and I'm putting it in the beginning in case you are a skip to the end person. Um, Josh Hader is a relief pitcher, and as such, he literally runs out of energy in 60 pitches. So the strat in this division in the final boss battle is to seriously take until two strikes with every single hitter until Hader runs out of energy. You can check his energy and his confidence by holding R2 before the pitch comes in. Um, and then once he runs out of energy, you're gonna have the biggest PCI, the biggest contact zone that you can have. And then you can kind of start teeing off. Obviously don't start swinging at everything, uh, but you can be a little more liberal about what you're swinging at once he runs out of energy because you should be able to start crushing the ball. So if you're a little bit behind early on, it's okay. Make sure you're taking till two strikes with every hitter until he runs out of energy. I can't stress it enough. It's easily the best strategy for this division. Also, Josh Hader is a two-pitch pitcher, essentially. Um, he's got a four-seamer, two-seamer, which are both fastballs, and then a slider. Those are his only three pitches. The slider is really slow and easy, easily recognizable out of the hand because this is only on veteran or all-star difficulty. Um, and so I pretty much only swing at fastballs unless he hangs one and if you're gonna swing at a fastball Make sure you're slightly under the ball just in case it's a two-seamer Because his two-seamer has downward tilt on it And you don't want to swing over the top of the ball in this year's game because it's pretty much guaranteed to be a ground ball So all right, let's get into a run We're also going to go through a run in this video so you guys can see it for yourselves um Draft so this division is very pitcher heavy. So if you get not that good of a hitter, it's okay um, You will find some gems in the silvers and bronzes and golds um, But there aren't a lot of good diamond hitters in this division unfortunately to draft so uh, We're gonna go with Yadier Molina uh, Votto's a slightly better hitter, but with less vision um, You know what? Let's take Votto because we haven't used him yet, but this brings up a good point there's a lot of lefties in this division as well as far as hitters. You got Yelich, you got Edmonds, you got people like that. Um, those are actually really good picks because they cover both sides of the coin for you. So if you take a good lefty hitter that also has good splits, good splits against lefty pitchers, it's going to help you in the mini bosses because you'll have a handedness advantage. Um, and it's going to help you in the final boss because you still have good splits versus lefties. So Votto's not a bad pick here. Kind of a low roll, but it's okay. But we got the highest of high rolls in this round. So um, Chris Bryant, easily the best gold you can take. I think the second best gold for this is Paul Goldschmidt, who has 91 power versus left. Um, but you're really just looking to build your team to take down lefties and hold your own versus righties. Josh Bell is a decent pick as well if he's your only one, but Chris Bryant is the move here. Um, after this, we'll also back out and go to the uh, rosters. 
and I'll show you guys kind of some hidden gems that you can go for. Um, not the best hitters here. <laughs> this is a terrible, terrible uh, silver round. It's all right though. We already took a Yachty, so we gotta go Kevin Newman. Uh, Braun is one of the gems for this division. 80 power versus left, 60 vision. Also a very nice swing from what I've experienced so far this year. Uh, generates a lot of power in these moments. All right, so here's another thing to bring up. So in my complete showdown guide, I mentioned that if you were in the bronze round and none of your hitter choices helped you very much, uh, to just go ahead and take a pitcher because your roster is auto-filled uh, with the hitters that you didn't take. So um, the exception to this rule is actually the NL Central Division. For some reason, it has the most shallow roster as far as bronze hitters go. Um, when you when it fills your roster, it only gives you four options outside of your bench um, to choose from, as opposed to other divisions who have like seven or eight. So I don't know. They might just not have enough bronze hitters so for in the um, for in NL Central specifically if you find someone that can hit lefties at least a decent amount I would just go ahead and take them so 44 contact 45 power 58 vision isn't the worst so we'll just go ahead and bite the bullet and take that guy uh, Brock Holt probably not good enough with 33 power but again it's going to make it very shallow for our bench and our uh, people that are not on our bench that we can look at so we'll just take him just kind of have to take the hitters as they come uh, in this division unfortunately will craig is a very nice pull though 58 contact left 62 power left 61 vision again we're just looking for people uh, that help us versus josh Hader at the very end so if you're skipping to the end these perks are important if not they are not very important uh, we'll take rattled because I think it's good if you're skipping to the end and then both of these suck so we'll just take lucky seven all right so let's back out go to my inventory look at some of the players that can help you against Josh Hader specifically if you're skipping to the end the bronzes and silvers are more important so again I talked about Goldschmidt uh, 91 power versus left 80 contact versus left very nice um, Edmonds not bad Carpenter is a good lefty to have if you're doing the slow way. Very good bronze pull, actually. Great hitter. Uh, and then Tyler O'Neill is good. Despite the 18 vision, uh, good hitting stats. Should be able to put barrel on baseball pretty often. For the Pirates, I talked about Bell. Um, Gregory Polanco, also despite being a left-handed hitter, very good option for you. I like those two. I'm kind of going quick. Yelich fits the coin of if you get a lefty in the diamond round, it's okay. Already talked about Braun is a beast. Avisal Garcia is a beast. Uh, who else? Smoke is really good. A great swing. Even though his stats versus lefties aren't the best, um, really good swing. Generates a lot of power. Zero speed though. <laughs> so make sure you're being conservative on the base paths for the Reds. Obviously Suarez is a beast. Uh, Moustakis, really good lefty. Castellanos, really good righty. So you have options in this division for sure. Aquino very good um, again we're just focusing on beating Josh Hader at the end and then for the Cubs Chris Bryant obviously Contreras is good Schwerber's a good lefty you guys kind of get the point but I kind of wanted to run through that just in case um, and now let's get into the actual showdown so we took a lot of people that uh, <laughs> were out of position so we're gonna end up with some commons and that's okay uh, let's go see we only have three extra players for our bench and they're all not very good versus lefty so we'll kind of have to leave this how it is let's set our lineup as we were talking in the previous video the way I like to set my lineup for this is my best hitter uh, first and my second best hitter eighth and then I kind of like to distribute uh, some good hitters along with some bad hitters throughout this man this catcher is horrible <laughs> Let's hope for uh, Yachty. I thought we took a Yachty already. Dang, I should have taken gold Yachty. Anyways, so this looks fine. It's not as big of a deal for the mini bosses. So I was going to break down all these blue moments, but they change a lot. And um, honestly, it's hard to keep track of for me. So as a general rule, um, I would skip these mini moments unless they're really quick. So like tally three hits, two runs, one extra base hit in the first three innings. Stuff like this, multiple inning hit challenges, 
I usually just load in and try to see if I can get it done in the first inning and if I don't then I quit out so we'll go ahead and do that we got all the hitting stats in the first inning so that's gonna add a run for us not too bad we'll also get a silver round uh, Brian Reynolds is a great pick that I forgot to mention for silver so we'll take him um, but yeah, for these small moments, if I can't get them done very quickly, I just skip them. And the way you can skip them is by loading in and then quitting immediately. Uh, do not hit options to skip because that will skip you all the way to the final showdown. Make sure you're updating your players and equipping your perks as you go as well. This moment is we're down to in the bottom of the eighth. More than one inning is not good for me, so I'm just going to load in and quit this one out. So we quit out of that one, and this one is we're in the bottom of the ninth, win the game while recording a strikeout. That's worth trying. It's pretty quick. Also, a note, it should do this automatically if you draft a, a relief pitcher in your initial draft, but make sure your best pitcher for relief is in the closing pitcher spot and that your best starting pitcher is in the ace spot. Um, you really only need two pitchers for any of these moments. They'll either pick your starter or your closer. So that's the move there. We picked up the save. That's how you know Showdown is different than ranked seasons, especially for me because I did not blow that save uh, into another silver round. Uh, Bader is a decent choice. Low vision, though. I really like DeYoung. He's another one that will help you with the mini bosses as well as with Hater because he has good splits versus righties and against lefties. So let's get rid of Lucky 7 and put DeYoung in our spot and now we're on a mini boss remember for mini bosses you can put people out of position to help you with your hitting so we'll go ahead and do that as far as I know these mini bosses don't change as I said earlier the first one is gonna be Luis Castillo from the Reds the second one is Jack Flaherty from the Cardinals just so you guys know so we'll hop into the Luis Castillo showdown a boss battle so um, you get 12 outs and you need four runs, so this one's really not bad. Uh, the first mini boss is not bad at all for any of these divisions. Uh, as far as hitting against Luis Castillo, he pretty much only throws you changeups and fastballs. His changeup sits around low 80s, his fastball sits around mid 90s. Uh, but keep in mind that his primary pitch in game this year is actually his circle changeup, so you may see off speed more often than you see it from other pitchers. Um, he still gives you a healthy amount of fastballs, but as you can see there, first pitch was a circle changeup. So you got a lot of outs to play with, only four runs. Take the advice I've said uh, earlier in the comprehensive showdown guide. Make sure you're taking a lot of pitches. Make sure you're swinging at good pitches. Uh, avoid swinging at stuff on the corners. Um, be very smart on the base pass. Be hyper conservative. I'm talking so I swing late. <laughs> But uh, don't run yourself into any outs because these outs are very precious. And then avoid double plays at all costs. They really, really kill you in this game mode. Um, but overall, just try to wait for your pitch. 12 outs with 4 runs, you should be able to get it done against pretty much anyone. So we'll go ahead and knock this out. Boom, Paul DeYoung walks it off for us to dead center. We had 9 outs remaining. So I understand that I'm a good hitter on this game, but 9 outs is still a lot to work with. Uh, especially in Great American Ballpark, you guys should be able to hit a lot of bombs there. So I don't think the Luis Castillo boss battle is really that bad. We get some nice XP, we get a pack, we get 700 subs. Life is good. And we also get a gold perk and a gold player now. So hopefully we high roll. We did not. <laughs> we can either take Kane or Rizzo. I think Kane's slightly better for our final boss battle. Um, and then heart attack, gold perk, super good. I forgot to talk about perks. Um, you can go watch my other video if you need to see it. But essentially, any perks that give you a contact boost a decent amount of time are good perks. So that obviously heart attack is the best one because um, you are always losing in these boss battles. So that's just a quick summary. We pick up Lorenzo Kane. Nice pull for us. Now we're on to the second set of little bosses. This is when rewards start to get a little better. As you can see, the third one is a gold perk and a gold player. Um, if you really need the help, uh, try to knock all these out, especially to get the extra runs. But once again, uh, if it's a long moment, like this one is more than one inning, I'm just gonna quit out of it. Playing Showdown through the ladder is really just a balance between how much help do you need to beat the final boss compared to how much time do you want to spend in 
side of one showdown run. So it's different for every person. If you're good enough to just go in down 15 to 2, um, skip ahead right after the second mini boss. If not, try to knock these little ones out as much as you can. Uh, seventh inning tied game, we're going to quit out of this one as well. All right, another pitching mission, so we're going to quit out of this one too. So we're basically just skipping from mini boss battle to mini boss battle, which is fine. We're not getting any extra boosts, we're not getting any extra runs. Uh, but in the interest of saving time for myself, I think this is the best play. Once again, if you really need help, try to do as many of these as you can, but it will take uh, your run significantly longer to finish. And we're on to the second boss battle, which is Jack Flaherty. As I said earlier, remember to go back to pure hitters for these boss battles. And we are once again facing a right-handed pitcher. So we're going to go with people that are good versus right-handed pitching. Uh, this lineup looks good. This is where DeYoung, someone like DeYoung comes in clutch because he's decent against Hater at the end, but he's a beast versus these mini bosses. So let's load in to Jack Flaherty and then I'll go over some strats for him. All right, so we are in the moment for Jack Flaherty. So I'm gonna go over some strategies for beating Jack Flaherty. The biggest one, I keep saying this being patient in these boss battles, but it's especially important versus Jack Flaherty because if we look at his player card, he has 60 walks per nine and 61 control, which is really low. So um, this guy is very wild, even when you face him as a computer controlled player uh, and such, you should be able to get ahead in the count a lot and draw walks a lot. So be extra, extra patient, patient versus Jack Flaherty. Also, um, he's going to throw you fastballs a bulk of the time. So if he lays you one down the middle, go ahead and swing. Otherwise, be patient. But I'd say about 50 to 60% of the pitches that you'll see from this Jack Flaherty will be fastballs. Um, the only off speed you really need to worry about as well is the changeup uh, with how pitch speeds are slow in these boss battles because of the difficulty they're on. The slider and the knuckle curve are very easy to recognize immediately out of the hand. And I would only suggest swinging at these if you can tell that they're hanging and you're going to be able to crush it. So my advice, take a lot of pitches, try to draw some walks, obviously stay out of double plays as much as you can. <laughs> so important. And uh, only swing at off speed if it's a hanger or if it's a two strike count, obviously. So let's go ahead and knock out this Jack Flaherty moment. Additionally, keep in mind that they do have Harrison Bader playing center field who has amazing speed and decent fielding stats. So if you rip one to center field, it's going to get caught sometimes. Don't get tilted. Um, I would suggest either trying to swing a little early or a little late to try to hit it to the corners. Um, but a lot of you guys are having trouble just timing up the ball in the first place. So I don't want to make it too complicated for y'all. Just wanted to say if you are lining out to the center fielder once or twice, it's going to be okay. <laughs> and Brian Reynolds walks it off. With the two-run double, we still had nine outs remaining. We only made one out. So again, you guys should be able to beat these mini-bosses if you are trying really hard and following the guidelines that I am showing you. Um, they are much easier for the most part than the final boss battle. So we take out Flaherty. Now these final three blue moments, let's go through this draft first. So we get... Uh, Willie Stargell, who's actually one of the best picks you can get. Still 102 power verse left. Going to be great against Josh Hader. So that's a huge thing for us. And then I really like Ice Water Veins uh, in this specific division. Because like I said, y'all should be taking till stu two strikes every single time early in the challenge versus Josh Hader. So Ice Water Veins is an insane perk for this. Significant contact boost and two strike counts. So... That was an amazing round. Again, make sure you're updating your perks as you go along and updating your squad as well. Stargell can play outfield or he can be out of position for us. Uh, we'll just leave him on the bench for now. These final three moments are the biggest bang for your buck as far as players and perks. Additionally, this last one gives you two runs towards the final boss instead of one. So again, if you're struggling, this would be the round where I would definitely try every single one of these no matter what. But for someone like myself who doesn't tend to struggle very much with the final boss, I'm once again going to follow the concept of skipping through if it's too long. So this is bottom of the eighth, completed two inning save. That one's going to be too long for me. 
um, but definitely consider doing one of these two if you need the help or both because they give you diamond player diamond perk and can give you up to three runs towards the boss battle second to last moment in the first three innings tally four hits three runs and one extra base hit We'll give this one a go. Also, a small little thing of note for these multiple inning hitting moments, if you do have the heart attack perk where you get a contact boost when you're losing, um, you can intentionally walk some runs in during the part of the inning where you're pitching so that your perk is activated when you go back in to hitting again in the second inning. Knock that one out, get an extra run towards the boss battle, get some additional items, a diamond player, Jim Edmonds is the move. <laughs> Yelich is really good too. This is a good diamond round for us. And then hard attack, man. Defibrillator is also really good too. If you guys were wondering, the diamond defibrillator is a very good perk. So that was an insane round for us. I think look, heading into the final boss battle, I think Kane's slightly better than Reynolds. So we're going to put uh, Edmonds in right field. Final moment entering the seventh inning. That's three innings of play, so for myself, I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. Also, I just misplayed. <laughs> it's a little thing, might save you about 30 seconds that I just did not do, but if you're on the final moment before the final boss and you are, decide you're gonna skip it, just go ahead and hit options to skip to final showdown. That'll save you about 30 seconds of loading in and quitting out since it is the last moment before the final showdown. I was, I just forgot about it just now. So we have made it to Josh Hader, the final boss. Again, make sure your lineup is optimized with out of position players and that you have one person on your bench that's gonna pinch hit for you that can do well against lefties. That looks like it's gonna be Will Craig for us. Unless we want Brian Reynolds instead. I think Brian Reynolds is slightly better. So he'll be our pinch hitter. Again, you want to order your lineup with your best hitter first your second best hitter, eighth, and then try to build up to a good hitter every third time. So this looks good, we'll do, we'll do it like this. Um, and yeah, we're gonna hop into the boss battle. I'll cut the face cam off, I'll show you some highlights, and we're gonna beat this thing. We need 13 runs, and we got 20 outs to work with. Again, just for a final recap for beating this Josh Hader moment, Please make sure you are taking until two strikes with every single hitter until you see that Josh Hader has run out of energy. This is the most important part of beating this boss. Also, make sure you're sitting fastball. Make sure you're sit swinging slightly under the fastball if you can help it, uh, just in case it's a two-seamer. With that being said, we're going to knock this out. I love all you guys. Stay tuned for the other five divisions. I'll be cranking them out as fast as I can. Uh, I love you guys. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time. Peace. Now batting. The center fielder. Lorenzo.
second base. Will play. Off the plate, ball one. Thank you. 